Okay. Yes. See some demonstration or recursion. So first of all, we will implement a, a countdown example, which I down, which I discussed in the lecture. Right? I write a function called countdown. So it may not it may not return anything. Function name is count down. We take an integer input parameter. So that is a function declaration. So in my main function, I call this down, down function, let's say with parameter five. And Return zero. Right. So then I have to write my uh, define my countdown function. Okay, integer n as input. There, what I do, I just print it the uh, value of n. And then new line. But I print n. And after that, I check the condition if n is greater than zero, I call the same function count down with n minus n minus one. Like that. So now let's see what's happened. I compile this function, it's great, compile, run the program, you see, recursively calls. So when I do this, it is my program. So you see in the main method I call countdown, it's close there with five. Then it print five and call the same function with four, and then it print four, and then come check the condition, satisfy. It call it with three, print the three, then it satisfy condition, print two, one, zero. If the zero case is not satisfied, then it don't print anything. So this last call is the recursive call. It's a linear recursion because it's called only once the same function. It is shell recursion because I call that as last one. Because you call as last one. So I'm going to show you some more things here. So let's open that and let's try to print the n value after this. So you see, when entering the function, you print the n value, and it call it back, call it back, and call it back. After it stops decalling it again and again, and I print back the n values. Right? So then you see what might happen. I compile the program and I run that. Can you understand what happens? So it print four, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And after that, start printing zero, one, two, three, four, five. Why it happens? So why it happens, you see, the function execution, first execution stop here and call in again. And stop here, call it again and again and again. And in when n 
equals zero, stop calling. It may not call it again, but it comes here and print zero and terminate the last call. When the last call terminates, it terminates the previous call. The previous call n is one, so because of that, it went one. Then it complete the previous call like that. So, so that's why we get back zero, one, two, three, four, five again. So you can try that example, and then and understand, try to understand what might happen in this example. Right. So then I will take uh, uh, the example we discussed, that is the greatest common device example. So I write a function called DCD. Let's see. First include CD Lego. And I am going to implement the function called GCD. GCD, which takes two integers and return an integer value. So my main function all this GCD, uh, I just put take the integer for common factor f is v c d maybe 15 and 10 and then I say that okay. v c d uh, which returns in the top box. Then I implement my GCD function. Take two integers called A and B. Then my best condition is if E equals zero. Yes, I do the same for PCB, E, and A, or D. Yes, I return. And this. this is the simplest PCB function. Satisfy the base condition. If B equals zero, it return B, return A. So A is the GCD. A is the GCD. In other cases, greatest common divisor is GCD B and A mod B. The records we call to the same. Okay. Let's combine this. Let's see. You see, you see the ten and five is fine. So maybe I want to calculate greatest common divisor of maybe like twenty five and eleven. So you know, is a five number, so then this should be, should be right. So, this is not right then. So 
as you see uh, this is a tail recursive function call it again okay, another event so in my next example i will implement the factorial function my factorial uh, function so there i want to show you some other thing as well uh, let's write the factorial function first A factorial returns may be a long value, long int, and my function is for factorial take integer n. So this is header, and I write that, define that function. That's others. Int integer n is the input parameter. Then I do that condition check here. Okay. And say if n greater than zero, I returns n multiplied linear n minus yes i say one this is my factorial function in case the input parameter n is greater than zero what I do, I multiply n with factorial n minus 1. In other cases, that is actually n equals 0. Factorial 0 is 1. So I return 1. So it should return 1. Return 1. I want to show some more thing here. So I implement fact only factorial function this factorial and I will save that when I compile that so you see it says no main it's only a file has function maybe I write another file say s.c file where I going to use that function so for example I write a Therefore, so look right there. I have only made I say here. and I want to take factorial of factorial right. Zero. Maybe I want to print that factorial value. See, print that function. Factorial. D. N. N. Like that, like that. I print it. it finished. So it has me. So here I don't have the implementation of factory, but I have to declare my factorial function here. It is a long function. Factorial is the name. Take integer as the input parameter. This is what we call function header. 
and this is my main function right so my function declaration is in the other file right there are two files so this one so I had a function called uh, fact, right? I wrote it. Fact, uh, sorry, I used the FC. So I moved it. Is okay. FAC dot elements. So my let me show you that I have a function implementation in this file. Actually, uh, I don't need the header file here because I'm not printing anything. I have a function implemented in this file called factory. Right? Then I have a function program called taxi, which use that factorial. Then how can we compile these two files together? So in GCC, if I want to compile these two files together, I can write type this two file in that is factorial file and the text file. And I say compile these two together and create executable whole file. So my for that I'm using a parameter called minus o and give a program name I want to produce. So if I don't give this, usually it create a file called a.out. That is uh, my final program. So using minus o, I can give the program name. So I say, please compile these two files and produce the program called fact. So either of these files should have a main method. If, if you want to do so one of these should have a main method. As you may see, this has the main method, this is not. So when I try to compile it, so it errors because it, I forget to close the brackets, I guess, here. Let me close it. I hope now everything is fine. So I compile. So it produced now, not the dot down, the file called fact. So I execute that now. So you see, it print the factorial value 100. So my function implemented in this file. So you see, if it's a recursive function, it called the same function. You might think it is a tail recursion, it not because, so it calls, 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 it not as the last call because after the final call, it do some calculation and returning from to the previous, previous and so. So this is not the last, last, last action they do it in this particular call. So it's not a tail recursion, non tail recursive. So it's implemented in a call factorial C. I can then use that function implementation in any of the other programs. So if you write everything in one single program, so you have to then use that program in others. So it's not a good idea to do so. If you divide your program into function, it's good to write a separate program or separate file to each and every function, rather writing the whole implementation in one function. So that, after that, that function, if you want to reuse in some other program, you can use this file and compile it with the other program. So that improves the reusability of your implementation. So for example, my factorial is implemented in the function called factorial.c. So that can be used in any, any of the programs. So for example, I am using in this function called test. In this function called test, I am using the factory. 
definition of factorial is not there. It is in the separate file. So I compare these two together using like that. I give GCC, the first file which has the function, the second file which has the main, and finally I produce the executable called factorial. So if I omit this, it produces the edit of the file. Like that. So if I then want to calculate the factorial of some other number, I only need to change this file. So maybe I want to get, let's say, factorial 50. I change here, that's 15. Save it and compile back and then run my factorial function. You can see factorial 15 is this, is a large number. So that's why I use long int to store the large number. If you use int, the space of the memory reserve to store the answer is not enough. Because when you do calculate factorial, it's finally it's a huge number. Right, this is my factorial example. Now let's see, so this is non-recursive uh, non function. Anyway, they are direct recursions as well as they are linear recursions because same function call only once. Now let's try to see the multiple recursive calls. Best example is, as you know, as I explained in the slides, fibonacci. Fibonacci, right? Fibonacci dot C. So I write it as a separate uh, program. So I have, I want to implement a function for fibonacci. It returns an integer. No, I don't know. In A C C I five or C, and take uh, integer as a input. So then I declare my function. Take integer n. And then I say if that n equals zero, return return r e sorry return zero. Then else if n equal one, return one. In any other cases, C N minus one plus one N minus two. That is my declaration of Fibonacci series. Right? So it, this file has my declaration of the function. So I will save this file. Maybe I use the same function to test this for instead of now. Factorial, I want to use Fibonacci. Maybe I want to get Fibonacci 3, the third number, 0, first, second, third number, 3 series. See, number 3 is I did. Here I consider factorial, now I call. Yeah. 
So then I have to do a declaration here of my function. Uh, yeah, C function. This is actually normal now. Right. So my text file here has the main program, which call the cyber as a function. So I compile and my test program together and create a fiber 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 okay there is a mistake here in my x file this is s5 b right my variable is call it as f5 b yeah, f5 b right I maybe I see my text file. If I L. C C C Right. Let's try to compile that. Minus O and say if right and get from. So I run five minus three is two. So if I want to get five minus five, put number in the sequence. Right here, and then compile that. And we have five, to five, like that. So, as a homework, you have to write a recursive function instead of just calling these ones. Is the calling these ones? You have to write a recursive function which print the series of that. So, in other words, you have to implement as a as a homework. You have to implement a function for fiber mostly sequence which take integers right here. So, this function should print sequence of fiber mostly numbers like starting from zero so that function should also be a recursive function so this is my example of fibonacci right now let's uh, See the power function. I forget to show how do you calculate the power value? So let's write a function called power value. So I declare the function here, which take the base and the exponent values like that so then i declare it power function take int this and two maybe n times so then i check whether if n n equal to zero then Power of any base, you know, one. If return one. Else, it returns. It, it's here. So 
this multiply power in minus one. This is the equation of my power function. So let's use my same test function uh, to test this power. If they in and in, yeah, I comment it out. And instead of fibonacci, I want power p. Uh, and then power. If I to the power, let's say, uh, five to the power three. So five to the three. to the power of three equal p. Right. My main So I save that. Now I combine power c with my test and create a executable for power. Mm. Okay, there was a mistake here in power function. Two or double power is zero is one, otherwise it calls base into power. Right. Now combine. Uh, here I have issue here P O W right now I think everything should be okay right my combine power suitable is it five to the power three is hundred fifty so that's how our functions look like the recursive. Even though this is the last call, it's not tail recursion. As I said, there is a calculation after the call. Right. That is an example of my power function. So now let's uh, have a look on. Is even and is odd functions where we can use uh, to calculate even and odd numbers. Uh, maybe I use uh, function for uh, is even. Let's see. There I Return declare function is even which take integer and return it and then is which take integer and return integer. So my is even I did declare that is even take integer n then that is if n equals zero I return return zero as I return is odd in minus one 
it is odd. If n is even, n minus is odd. So that's what it says. So this line is seven. Okay, is seven all is odd. Now I create is odd function. It has is even. And then I declare, declare is odd. Then I implement here is odd function. Is odd function. Then I say return. Return not is a one n. n is not a even, then it is a okay. not is even. This is the definition of this. It's not a even, it is odd. This is, is odd function. So then in the, my test functions. I'm going to use this. So maybe I comment on this. And I create a use this even. And in the main, I have, uh, let's say, uh, I write like that. I say if is even n when that. And then maybe I don't need this, then this. Maybe I create a uh, n. Say n equal. This is my name. So I put four and call is zero. Since I'm calling it and it's zero, I don't need this one here. And I declare a zero function. And then main method, I have integer n point four. And I call is zero with four. If it is true, I have to a number, else I have to And I'm calling is zero. So it's zero point is so. The mutual function. So I compile now is even C is of C and my test C and finally create a function uh, program for let's say test create. Let's run this test. Ah, it's been so mistake. Test. How oh, is the other way around? Let's check out this. If, if is even, is even n, then print f to a number, else it print f or not. Right? I am calling this even. Right? That's fine. Then I if there is even zero, if it is zero, it should be done one time because it's true. One is uh, if it is zero, it's even now, so it should return one. Otherwise, it's return one. Call the one. Now, I 
compiler and then run this is number even number so i modify my main program a little bit like that maybe if maybe i see that so is printed and even number and then I can end then I save something so simple Uh, percentage and in here like maybe I change that to like nine is a lot right save it I only change the test so I will come time and then nine is open. So you see it works. So this is my implementation of this even, and this is my implementation is of this all. So you see it's even talks with dot this all. This is all called this even. And this is the function where I use it. Okay. As you see, after I implement these two and it is tested and corrected, tested and understand it's correct. So then, so we don't need to touch these two. Any other programs we can use it. So this is, this may not have any compilation or whatever else is correct. And then we could use it without worries in any of our other programs. So that's why writing a function, each function in separate file is important. So that file, after testing, we can keep it aside. We can keep it in our libraries and we can reuse those functions. So, so it's a good practice to implement a function in separate ones, rather writing everything in one single file. If you write everything in one single file, it's too getting too long, hard to follow, debug, and so on. So those things also you practice when you do it. So you see in this example, so I am implementing even function in the recursive way. It is a mutual mutual recursion, it's a mutual recursion implementation as a last example i will show you what happens when you do infinite application for that i am using my test program directly so there will be i implemented the uh, infinite recursion for so it's taking teacher here all right, so I declare that also in the same file just yes, for the illustration. And then I use the one, nothing returns here. So then, void, right? I implement in the same file. So, what I do, I just print uh, this end. And for same function with n plus one. Like that. So there is a function called rec prints the parameter n and all the same function is n plus one. So you do 
infinitely because there are no base conditions. Right? So we'll be after I explain that here. Maybe I call this back back function with number. So when it starts from one, it goes one, two, three, like that. So let's see what's happening. Five. Sorry, I don't need this. Those slides because of that, it only called red function. So I compile this only, then I call editor. You see, it's printing the numbers uh, one after the other. So you see, it's sequentially print numbers after that memory of one. Because recursions stop the execution of the same function at the middle or at the end and call the same again. We call the same again, same again, same again, same again, same again, and so on. So when you do so, it's, it's stack is wrong and then at the some stage it should crash. So you see it's scared all segmentation for crashing. So so you see this is my fault because it all the same increasing and again and again and again so i call it here with one from one to all the numbers it went one 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 two three four like that after it's calling this number of times this memory is full and crash so so like that so with that I guess you understand what is the concept of recursion and how it works. So it's very interesting concepts where we should use when we solve the problems because we could source the problems in very simple and clean manner when you use recursions. Although, as I mentioned, when you use recursive implementations, they you have to be very careful not to end up with this crash. So, for that, you need to be careful in the base condition, the termination condition. Okay, thank you very much for watching the demonstration.